I'm obsessed with traveling light and that means I'm always on the lookout for anything that reduces weight to make traveling easier and reduces travel friction. So here is some great gear that does just that. If you're covering any distance with a pack, weight becomes a significant factor. In short, you can cover more ground in more comfort with a lighter load. And when it comes to one bag travel, especially if you're planning to fly and want to rely on hand luggage to speed you through airports, then weight becomes crucial. In fact, it's not unheard of for some people to break a toothbrush in half to save a little bit of weight. So whilst perhaps not quite that extreme, here are some great weight saving travel items that I've been using when out and about, and most recently on holiday, or as you might say, vacation. So here we are in the beautiful Isles of Scilly. This island is called Briar. And I'm going to just show you this Helinox chair. Helinox is a company I've used before. I've got one of their chairs. I thought it was super lightweight. The one I had, it weighs about a kilogram. This one is the Helinox chair zero, and it only weighs just under half a kilogram. So 490 grams. It is unbelievably light. So let's just see how we put this together. and it comes really in two halves. So we've got the frame and then we've got the seat material itself. This is a Cordura nylon with aramid fibers that makes it super tough whilst keeping the weight down. And this is a certain type of aluminium specially chosen because it resists cracking. And there we have the frame for the chair itself. And it says this side up, goes there, that goes there. That goes there. And then we have that there. And there we have a super lightweight chair. Let's just give it a go. Now then, this supports my back. At my age, I don't want to be sat cross-legged on a towel. I find that really hurts my back. This is something I could sit in all day long. So whether you're at the beach or whether you're at a festival or just on a picnic, this for me is a perfect solution. So it is sinking into the sand a little bit and that could be a problem, but you can get a base fabric for the Helinox that attaches to all the four legs and stops it sinking in the sand. Now it's not cheap. I bought this for 125 pounds, but there's nothing that can match this weight. And that's because of the attention that's gone into picking the right aluminium that can be thin enough, but also strong enough you're probably paying twice as much as you might do, but you are getting something that is half the weight. And so I'm always on a mission to find quality products that are lightweight for outdoor use. This ticks that box massively and I really like it. If you follow this channel on a regular basis, you may be aware that my go-to wallet is this, and this is the Winston from Wingback, and it's a fabulous wallet. And if you want to see why, just come back and check out this link here. However, in pursuit of reducing weight and to some extent bulk, I wanted to try something new. And this is it. This is the card sleeve from Bellroy and wallets don't come much more compact and lightweight than this while still maintaining some practical features. The card sleeve comes in eight color options, but I picked this one because it is a little bit different in that it's a collaboration with Carryology, the brand which showcases and discusses all things everyday carry. Apart from a bit of branding here and this orange color highlight here, the only real difference I can see is the fact that the leather used here is waterproof, 
which is actually a really welcome addition. And the good news is the price is the same as all the others in the range. In terms of size and weight, this is not much larger than a credit card. And the weight is just 18 grams, one of the lightest wallets I've come across. We have three pockets here, two on either side and one in the center. And this pull tab here enables easy access to the center contents. My go-to method of payment these days is the card loaded onto my phone, but if that fails, I have my second most used credit card, which I'm putting in this easy access pocket here. And that is accompanied by a bit of cash just for emergencies. The second outside pocket here, I reserve for my debit card, and that's mainly used simply to draw cash out of a cash point. And also I'm putting in here my driving license. The center pocket I use for things I don't expect to need that often. So that would include this Chipolo card. This allows me to find my wallet if it's lost using Find My on my iPhone. And I also have a post-it note on the back and I put my most used numbers on the back here in case I lose my phone and can't remember the number. Then I have this Fresnel Flatfield magnifier. If I lose my glasses, I can use this to read the text on my phone. Otherwise I can't see it at all. So that's good for emergencies. I also have a bit of paper just to write things on in an emergency. And then I also carry my donor card. So these things all go in the center pocket of the wallet. So the pull tab in this case is more for emergency use. For example, pull here if you need a kidney. The only things I'm missing from my usual setup is this right in the rain notebook, but I figure for emergencies, a single piece of paper will do. And I used to carry a pen in this wallet, but I already carry a pen in my Victorinox compact. So I'm pretty much covered for that. Then I also used to carry the credit card, which I've now downloaded to my phone, but I figure I shouldn't really need that anymore. So this is now extremely lightweight and compact and my plan is to use this over the next few months. So keep watching or even better subscribe to the channel if you want to see how I get on. And as always, if you want to know more about anything mentioned in the video, I'll have links in the description below. Okay, and for the next one, we're gonna go back outside. Another item I brought with me is this. This is a water bottle called Vapor. And what makes this special is that the holder is actually plastic and a flexible plastic. And this means first and foremost that this bottle is super lightweight. The cap is solid, it has a flip lid on it. You need two hands to hold it to drink. That's probably the only downside. But as well as being lightweight, it folds up really small. So for ultralight traveling, then this is a great option. It has a really wide neck, so the bottle and screws, so it's easy to fill. And then when all the contents are emptied, put the top back on, flip the lid. Then the great thing is it is flat, so it takes up virtually no space when you're packing virtually no weight then you can fold it up like that and then even the carabiner can lock that in place like that so there's virtually no weight no space taken up so you've got room in your pack if you've got a liter bottle that's a solid bottle then it's going to take up a liter of space and if you are limited for space say with hand luggage then that could be a problem also, I should say these are very affordable as well. So a great water bottle for compact and lightweight travel. Okay, I should warn you, the next item on the list is toilet related and number twos in particular. So get ready to skip to the next chapter. Okay, let's set the scene. You're traveling in a strange country and you had the local street food last night and it's playing havoc with your guts. You need to go and you need to go now. And that lovely hotel you had your eye on is now three tuk-tuk rides away and no longer an option. The pressure's building and it's going to blow. You now have no other option. It has to be that public toilet. So you step into the unknown and at first you breathe a sigh of relief as this one actually has a toilet in it. Then you breathe in the aroma and you know it's going to be bad. Then horror of horrors. 
you realise there's no toilet roll and it's too late to turn back. What follows next is the stuff of nightmares. But it doesn't have to be like this if you have one of these. This, my friends, believe it or not, launched on Kickstarter some time back is the smallest, lightest and most discreet travel bidet on the market. It's called Kulo Clean and as part of the research for this video, I've come to realise that Kulo is Spanish for, you guessed it, ass. And I feel a bit of a culo for not knowing that before. This fits on the end of just about any plastic bottle, but you have to push it on tight, otherwise you might, well, lose it in use. And if you have access to some warm water, then even better for that touch of luxury. And then, well, just blast your butt. You now have your own portable equivalent of that high-tech Japanese toilet you might have seen, which does it all for you. So this little gadget can really save the day and in my view, can be worth its weight in gold. And you will thank me if you ever use one in anger. Now you can dry yourself with this tiny matador towel. Now this is made from nanofiber and absorbs more than twice its own weight in water. It's ultra compact as you can see, but unrolls to a size of 39 centimeters square and it's very lightweight at 25 grams. It's also machine washable and air dries super quickly. The one I've got here comes with this silicon holder, which is a little bit awkward to get the towel back in, but the new one comes with an ultralight mesh storage bag, which I prefer, and it also saves a little bit of weight too. So these two tiny items combined can be an absolute lifesaver, not only for city travels, but also for through hikes, avoiding the need to carry toilet paper with you, and even better, avoiding the need to pack out that used toilet roll on your journey. Okay, let's head outside once more. And if you thought simple binocular straps were beyond innovation, then have a look at this. So this is from Rick Young Outdoors, and it is very different to a normal strap for a pair of binoculars or maybe even a camera. And it's the way it works that sets it apart, but it's also very lightweight and it doesn't take up much space at all. So let's just show you it in action. You can wear it like that in the traditional sense, but it gets more interesting if you put an arm through there. Then it is supported much better and the weight is actually spread across the shoulders a little bit more on the back. And that way you can easily bring it up to eye level really simply. And it holds it closer to the body. So it's a really comfortable way to carry it. Now, if you're moving around a lot, traditionally binoculars would be swinging around, potentially knocking against things, particularly when you've got rocks like we have here, but this has a trick up its sleeve and that is if you just put these straps around there like that the binoculars are now held to the body you can move around you can even jog with these and it's held tight you can lean over move around and the binoculars hold fast so it's a great way of carrying it if you're on a long hike stops it swinging around and it makes it much more comfortable to carry so we've got one long piece of shock cord here we've got a couple of clips there to clip it onto the binoculars. And then the interesting bit here is this clip at the back here. And I've had this now for a couple of years and it works really well. There's no way I'd go back to the conventional way of carrying binoculars with thin straps here and then a big thick strap around your neck. So there you have it, a more practical, lightweight, less bulky way of carrying your binoculars. Now, I appreciate carrying a chair around isn't everyone's idea of traveling light, even a 490 gram chair. Although I will say if you're planning to sit around, say on a day at the beach or going to a festival, then the Helinox is something I would not want to be without. However, for long hikes or visiting the sites in a city, there is another super lightweight seat option and it's this. This is the Z seat pad from Thermarest and I've had this one for about two or three years now and when I'm traveling it's always with me and that's because there's virtually no weight here at just 50 grams. 
and it works so well. What this thing does is to give you a comfy dry seat anywhere. So imagine a hard rock, a damp log, a wooden seat, wet grass, a concrete slab, or just sat down in the snow. You get the idea. This makes anywhere comfortable. You can even kneel on it, say, when lighting a fire or cooking when camping. You can use it to stand on to keep your feet dry or sand free when putting your shoes back on. It has this silver side which reflects heat and actually feels warm to sit on. It also works great with that Helinox chair as it adds comfort and warmth. And incidentally, it can also be used to protect fragile items in your pack. Now, my wife is nowhere near as fanatical about gear as I am, and that's an understatement, but she does have one of these. In fact, it's probably the only thing we both always carry on a trip. The downside is that no matter how you look at it, it is quite bulky. So if you're limited on bag size, that could be an issue. However, when I carry it in a backpack, I fold it in half like this and put it at the back of my pack or in the laptop pocket. And I find that it not only adds structural support, but it also adds to the carry comfort too. It should cost around £15 and I'll put a link to the supplier webpage below. Often when traveling, you have a full pack and therefore a spare bag can be really useful to have with you. And this could be for picking up supplies when traveling or having a lightweight option so you can leave your main bag behind when venturing out. So this bag needs to be compact and lightweight and that's exactly what this is. This is the Osprey Ultralight stuff pack and what really stands out about this is how compact it is as you can see and how lightweight it is it weighs in at just 110 grams so the fabric is quite thin but it is really tough so don't let that put you off it's also covered in a waterproof coating and as you can see we've got a bottle pocket here and we've also got this stash pocket in the top here. The main zips of which there are two for access to the main pocket open it fully up so you can easily see everything in there and the straps although they are pretty thin they're also actually surprisingly comfortable. You've also got this handle here so you can pick it up like a bag and you've got adjustable shoulder straps here. So very thin but very tough, very compact, very lightweight and very practical. Now I've had this one for a couple of years now, it gets used a lot when I'm traveling and it has stood up really well as you can see, so highly recommend it. And when it comes to ultralight useful gear that takes up almost no space, then there's always room for a spork, not just for backpacking or traveling. This is also great for office lunches and takeaways when you forget to pick up that fork from the deli or simply to avoid plastic or disposable cutlery. This one is from sea to summer. It's quite long as you can see, which means it will reach right to the bottom of your pot noodle. And it's also made out of aluminium, which means it's about as light as it gets. And this thing weighs just 11 grams. Also comes with a carabiner, if you want to hang it on the outside of your bag. And if you don't get on with a spork, you could always go for separate utensils if you prefer. But at the size and at this weight, there's really no reason not to keep one in your pack. If like me, lightweight carry floats your boat, then you should definitely check out this Urban Everyday Carry Get You Out of Trouble kit. Just click on this link here. Well, that's it for this one. I hope that's been useful. Thank you as always for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.